The celiac trunk arises immediately below the margin of the aortic opening at the level of T12. It divides into three branches, the common hepatic, the left gastric, and the splenic. Between them, these supply the liver, stomach, duodenum, pancreas, and spleen. The superior mesenteric artery arises at the level of L1. Its branches supply the small intestine and much of the large intestine. The inferior mesenteric artery arises at the level of L3. Its branches supply the distal part of the large intestine. Of the branches of the aorta that arise in pairs, much the largest are the right and left renal arteries, which supply the kidneys. They arise just below the level of the superior mesenteric artery. Arising at about L2 are, in the female, the ovarian, and in the male, the testicular arteries, which run downward and laterally over the psoas muscle. Four pairs of lumbar arteries arise from the back of the aorta. Here are the lower two. They pass behind psoas major, where they branch to supply the back, the spine, and the abdominal wall. Lastly, here's the median sacral artery, which arises from the back of the aorta, just above the bifurcation, and passes down into the pelvis. The common iliac artery runs close to the medial border of psoas major. It divides here at the pelvic brim. Here's the external iliac artery. Here's the internal. We'll look at the internal iliac in the next section. The external iliac artery is the main artery to the lower extremity. It runs along the pelvic brim, just medial to psoas major, and passes beneath the inguinal ligament. Below the inguinal ligament, the artery goes by a different name, the femoral artery. Just before passing beneath the ligament, the external iliac gives off two branches, the deep circumflex iliac laterally and the inferior epigastric medially. The inferior to here. To see the pelvic blood vessels, we'll remove one half of the pelvis and go round to a medial view. We'll also remove the lining of peritoneum and pelvic fascia. In this dissection, the veins which follow the arteries closely have been removed to simplify the picture. The arteries of the pelvic region are all branches of the internal iliac artery. The way they arise is quite variable. This is the superior gluteal artery. This is the inferior gluteal. They pass through the greater sciatic foramen to supply the buttock region. This is the internal pudendal artery, which we'll return to in a minute. This is the obturator artery, passing forwards into the obturator canal along with the obturator nerve. The most anterior branch of the internal iliac comes to a blind end. In the fetus, it's the umbilical artery. Branches to the pelvic organs arise in a widely varying fashion. These are the divided ends of the vesicle arteries, superior and inferior, which supply the bladder. This is the middle rectal artery, which supplies the lower part of the rectum. In the female, the uterine arteries also arise, directly or indirectly, from the internal iliac. The branch of the internal iliac that concerns us most closely here is the internal pudendal artery. It supplies the blood supply to the perineum. To reach the perineum, the internal pudendal artery goes out through the greater sciatic foramen, around the sacrospinous ligament, and back in through the lesser sciatic foramen. In this way, the internal pudendal artery ends up below the pelvic diaphragm. To follow its course, we'll go round to the back. The gluteal vessels and the sciatic nerve have been removed. Here's the internal pudendal artery emerging below piriformis. It passes behind the sacrospinous ligament, which is here, 
and behind this small muscle, the superior gemellus. The internal pudental artery runs downward.